Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to your hour. <laughs> And welcome to another exciting episode of Health with Mr. Zane and Mr. Liko. Last time, we focused on the final part of our overall well-being model. Can you remember what we looked at? Yes, it is mental well-being. We learnt about how different people cope with their mental health, who they turn to for help, and understanding that it is okay to speak up. Last time, Buddy was having lots of negative thoughts in the classroom. He had lots going on at home and at school and did not know how to cope with the stress. However, with some help from his friend Renesha, he was able to turn these negative thoughts into a positive mindset. He made a very important choice to better his well-being by speaking up and asking for help. Today, we will put all four parts of our overall well-being together. Take a look at our Yarara College well-being model. What do you see? Throughout this term, we have learnt about social, physical, emotional and mental well-being. We have given you different scenarios to show you how the choices you make both at home and at school every day can affect each part of your well-being. Let's go and ask some of the people in our Yurara community on what well-being means to them and how the choices that they make can influence how they think, feel act and relate to others. Let's go take a look together. All I know is pretty much about well-being is like taking care of myself, making sure that I'm good, um, physically, mentally and spiritually as well, because I, if I didn't, I'd probably go crazy. Yeah. To me, um, a lot about looking after yourself and the ones around you. So not just maybe physically, but mentally um, and socially as well. So. Making sure nobody's left out even is something yeah. that helps with well-being, I think. Yeah. Uh, keep himself strong. I'm the same. There's, I think, three stages of this, yeah, like you said. Yeah. Mental, um, physical and emotional. Yeah. And yeah, I think if you know, I don't take care of myself physically, I'm not happy with myself. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, yeah, I think very similar. Um, a lot of it's in your mind, I think. Like, you've got to think, well, I need to be right physically, mentally, spiritually socially and all those things and it's good to get yourself right and then you can start to care for others. Keeping your mind safe, uh, happy, healthy, your body healthy, keeping yourself um, healthy by talking to other people, expressing your emotions. And... So you see there, everyone has a different take on what well-being means to them. However, the main message is that your choices can lead you to being happy, healthy and comfortable, which is what well-being is all about. Without one part, your well-being will never be complete. In summary, we will show you some highlights from our previous videos to remind you on what the different parts of our well-being mean. Time to rewind. Time to rewind. Come with me. Social well-being is having good and positive relationships with other people. Most importantly, with your family and friends. There's more to it than just having big muscles. Physical well-being is actually our lifestyle choices to help us to improve our health, avoid getting sick, and living in a balanced state, body, mind, and spirit. Emotional well-being is based on how we think, feel, and relate to ourselves and other people around us. It is about the emotions we feel on the inside that helps us make different choices. So I'll be, what's that? So it's how we feel on the inside and, and how strong our thinking is and how we're going with our thinking. <sighs> Good game, brother. Cheers, brother. Congratulations on making it this far into the term. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about your well-being and how your choices can influence you in both a positive 
and a negative way. Next time, we will introduce to you the first part of your assessment for this topic. This will be a nice, simple way to see how much you know about your overall well-being and how well you can show your understanding of our well-being model. Stay tuned and stay safe. Hey, how was that get together on the weekend? Sorry I didn't make it. Oh, that's okay. Oh, it was heaps of fun. We were playing board games, lots of food, lots of people. Stop, heaps I'm jealous already. Oh. Hi, I'm Kate. Hi, I'm Paula and welcome to Urara to You News. Today, we're going to be interviewing Hugh from the Centre of Pro Appropriate Technology. But before we do that, let's cross over to Mr T for the local weather report. I'm in the desert. Thanks, Mr T. Now let's cross live to Will at the Centre for Appropriate Technology. Thanks. So today we're here with Hugh from Centre for Appropriate Technology. How are you? Good, mate. Thank you. No worries. So what made you choose to become uh, and work at Centre for Appropriate Technology? Um, I've been through a few different uh, industries uh, throughout my um, working career mm -hmm. and I thought why not uh, you know, study for my cert for a uh, trainer and assessor and work at an RTO which is Centre for Appropriate Technology which they do a lot of remote training out uh, or remote communities and stuff like that so mm -hmm. I thought why not put a lot of those certificates that I've got in the past into use and train in it. So what would a normal day look like for you here at CFAT? A normal day, it varies, it's really good. Once uh, everything's sort of back to normal, you know, we've been having uh, issues with the COVID-19. So once we head out to remote communities and things start to look normal again, every day is, you know, it's different. It's, it's exciting because you're going out to remote communities, you're seeing a, uh, different uh, participants that come along from different areas, different industries. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. So if one of our Urara students watching from home, if they wanted to come and work at Centre for Appropriate Technology, um, what sort of pathways or what sort of options would be available to them? Well, Centre for Appropriate Technology, we're an RTO, but also, you know, we've got different departments in, in CFAT. So we've got facilities, there's the construction, you know, we've got a laser cutter, they're getting training in that, so automotive, welding. So there's heaps of pathways to take, but, and we've got the trainer and assessors. Too, so you can do your uh, cert four. Hmm. Nice. So once um, you you completed your training to become a trainer, what um, sort of options become available to you now that you've completed that training? Uh, lots of options open up. So you know, uh, if I wanted to move out of uh, CFAT, you know, there's places like CDU, Bachelor, other TAFE places. So yeah, it just it opens a lot of doors once you get your TAE, which hmm. is really good. Fantastic. Thanks for your time today, Hugh, and back to you in the studio. Thank you. Thanks, Will. I hope you enjoyed your news report today. Tune in next time to find out about another career. Have a great day. Keep learning. Bye. Bye. And welcome to Word of the Week. As you can see, I'm not Miss Sandra. Miss Sandra's got some other work to do. So I'm filling in for Miss Sandra today. Today we're looking at weight and weight. All right? Two words sound the same but spelt different. They have two different meanings. What does this weight mean? That's correct. The weight where we're going to weigh something we're going to put them on here, and you'll see later on, and we'll check with the scales just to see how much something weighs. So what's this weight? This weight is when we're waiting for the bus, waiting for a program to come on, waiting for footy to start again, or waiting, like everyone is, to come back to Urara once COVID-19 has eased down. That's the words of the week for this week. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back. 
Yesterday, we introduced the concept of weight, and we were looking particularly at two measurements that we use to measure weight. Do you guys remember it all? That's right, we use a measurement called grams and another one called kilograms. Now, we also spoke about how many grams would go into a kilogram, and we came up with the number 1,000. So our example was a paper clip, which weighs roughly about one gram. If we get 1,000 of these paper clips and we put them on a scale, that's gonna equal a kilogram, or roughly maybe something that weighs as much as this glass jar. Now, today we're gonna to look at what we use to measure weight. I used a couple of examples yesterday, and one of them was in cooking. Do you remember what the word for the thing that we measure weight is called? It's called a scale. You're right. Now, a scale in the kitchen is something that we use to measure our ingredients. It helps us make sure we put the right amount of everything together and it comes out tasting delicious. Another thing we use is a scale to weigh people. So if you want to weigh how heavy you are for your exercising or you're trying to keep track of your diet, maybe you're going to weigh yourself. And when we weigh a person, we use the measurement of kilograms. And when we weigh something in the kitchen, usually, unless you're making something large, we use the weight of grams. For example, if I was baking a cake, I would need probably about 200 grams of butter in my cake. I wouldn't call it 0.2 kilograms or something like that. We'd use the measurements of grams in cooking. But if I was weighing myself, or I was weighing one of my little babies, my daughter Shiloh, she weighs about 12 kilograms. I'm not gonna say she weighs 12,000 grams. I'm gonna use the measurement of kilograms. Now, when we read a scale, there are two ways that we can read it, kind of like clocks. The one is digital, and the one is analog. Now the digital way of reading a scale is going to look pretty simple. It'll pop up with the number and it might even have a little dot next to it signifying that it's not a whole kilo. So if I was wanting to read 1.5 kilos, it would have a 1, then a dot, and a 5 after it. And then it would have kg, representing kilograms, at the end of the number. But if I was reading an analog kind of scale, which is a little bit trickier, we would have to look at something called a dial. Now a dial will point to the number. So if I go and stand on an old fashioned scale, I look down and I'm gonna try to figure out or see where my dial points to. And whatever number that dial points to is how much I weigh or how much whatever weighs that I'm wanting to know the answer to. So those are just a few of the ways that we weigh things. This week, we're going to continue to look at the importance of weight and what are some of the ways that we use it in the world around us. Stay tuned for more. Okay, welcome back. So we're now we're dealing with weight. And to measure weight, we have different types of weighing scales. Weighing scales are what we actually measure the, um, the weight on. So this one here we have is called a digital readout. If I can get down and just have a look in there, we can see if I put my hand on, the scale goes up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the difference between a full bottle of water, a half bottle of water, and an empty bottle of water. The full bottle of water weighs 57.0. That's 57 grams. Remember Sandra's word of the week? When they're small, they're actually called in grams. Can you remember how many grams make a kilogram? That's correct, a thousand. Now we have a half empty bottle of water, or some people like might say, a half full bottle of water. There we are. And what did that say, Daniel? 29.6 grams. 29.6. So if we were to round that up, we'd probably call that 30 grams. So 30 grams is nearly half, there we are. And now the difference is when we just had an empty bottle of water. And what does that mean, Daniel? 1.8. 1.8. So if we were to round that up, what would you say that was? That's correct. That'd be two.
Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You. Today we're going to be looking at reggae music. Reggae is a music genre that originated in Jamaica in the 1960s. Genre is another word for style. The most famous reggae artist is Bob Marley. However, the 1968 song Do the Reggae by Toots and the Maytals is considered by many people to be the very first reggae song. Reggae is characterised by its relatively slow tempo, use of offbeat rhythms and heavy bass lines. There are many genres related to reggae such as ska, dub and dancehall. Today I'm going to show you the different elements of a generic piece of reggae music. Generic means commonly used. First, let's look at a couple of different rhythms and drum patterns. Many different rhythms and drum patterns are used in reggae music. Here are some examples. This example demonstrates a swing rhythm on the hi-hat, a driving kick drum which occurs on every beat and rim shots. Rim shots are when you lay the drumstick flat across the snare and just hit down on the rim of the drum. I also use the snare and crash cymbal to signal the start of a new set of musical bars and also to signal the end of the rhythm. A bar is 4 beats and in this case a set of bars is 16 beats. In this example I am just using the kick drum and hi-hat and occasionally using the snare and crash cymbal to introduce the next set of musical bars. I end the rhythm by doing a drum fill and hitting the cymbals. This example is very similar to the first example, except here I am playing a straight rhythm on the hi-hat. We are going to use this rhythm to build our reggae tune. As you can hear, the bass line plays four bars, then stops four bars, and repeats this pattern rather than playing constantly throughout. Quite often, guitar players and keyboard players will only focus on two or three chords in reggae music. These chords are played in what are called chops. Chops is when you play chords in short stabs on the offbeat. The offbeat is played in between the drum rhythm. So there you have it, all the ingredients you need to create reggae music. Hola, welcome, welcome back. back. Today's word of the day is Burlopa, meaning shoulders. Have a go at saying Burlopa, meaning shoulders. See you next time. Bye. Burlopa. Burlopa. Hi, and welcome to the Clontarf segment of Show Us Your Colours. For me, I have two special uh, footy jumpers that I'd like to share. The first one is the one I'm wearing at the moment. It belongs to the Imalu Tigers, which is uh, which they compete on the Tiwi Island Football League. And they also celebrated um, 50 years um, last year. So for me, this holds a very special place um, and winning my first premiership in this, this jumper as a 15 year old. Yes, a long time ago, back in 1982. So yes, and uh, obviously a lot of our, my family members have uh, also played with the Imalu Football Club. Okay, the second one is 
the St. Mary's. Even though it's a training singlet. Yes, which is um, which they compete in the NTFL slash AFL NT up into the down competition. I was lucky enough to play there and um, with this mighty footy club and um, to win 12 senior premierships, I guess is very special. And also to play for 20 years, 20 seasons, yes. So this holds a very, you know, a very special uh, memory of this um, club also. Um, yes, so to you guys out there, if you guys could share your favourite footy team, whether it's a rugby or football, soccer, um, yes, if you guys could uh, do a video of why you, um, why they're your special um, um, footy, footy clubs, um, please send them in to us. And thank you. Have a great day. Cheers. I owed you mob. As you can see, I'm confused. The other day, I was Supergirl, Superwoman. Right now, I'm Captain Marvel. But that's not what the lesson is all about. So, gaming. I think it's useless. There is no place for gaming in this world. And right now, Miss Emily is wanting to attack me because I made that statement. But there it is. That's what I believe. However, my 15-year-old son disagrees with me. So I sent him away and I said, right, you need to go and find some reasons to convince me that gaming is important and how it can help you in your everyday life. So he went away, wrote up his argument, and he came and he read it to me. I recorded that conversation. So let's have a listen. My mother thinks gaming is useless, but I have a different opinion. Here are my reasons. My first reason is strategy. My next reason why gaming is useful is skill. My final reason is staying on task. Therefore, I believe gaming is a helpful tool to our social life and skills. People, come on, look at me. I'm confused. You're really going to have to help me. I, I, I just can't make up my mind. But yeah, that's just another comic interview. Um, so, in back, he gave me his argument. Nope, was not convinced at all. He had like three little words. Strategy. What was the other one? Strategy. Um, on task, staying on task. And you see, I couldn't even remember what his argument was about. So I said to him, listen, Joe, you're going to have to have a much more convincing argument if you want me to be convinced about the usefulness of gaming. So I sent him away again, and after about 10 or 15 minutes, he came back and I listened to his argument. Again, I recorded that argument. Let's hear what he had to say. My mother thinks gaming is useless. But I have a different opinion. Here are my reasons. My first reason is strategy. When playing Minecraft, you need strategy to build your houses. Even if it's just for fun, you still need some form of strategy. My next reason why gaming is useful is skill. When you're in a forest or deep in a mine, you would need skill to collect your resources that you need to build your house or village. My final reason is staying on task. Staying on task is very important while playing Minecraft. It also gives you the ability to stay on task with other jobs outside of gaming. Therefore, I believe gaming is a helpful tool to our social life and skills.
towards all the points I gave in this topic will help you in day-to-day -day life. Man, this is getting bad. I have changed universes. I started off in Marvel, now I'm in DC. People, the staff and those in the know are getting worried about me. You will have to help me decide where I am. But that's not what the lesson is all about. Now, did you hear the difference in my son's argument? The first was just words. The second time he came to me with longer sentences, evidence, examples of how strategies, how staying on task, and how your brain functions when you're working in Minecraft or just gaming in general. And you know what? It really changed my view. I'm really having a new look about why gaming is out there. And it makes me realize how much you know. Because I've watched you play Minecraft. I'm like, I ain't be able to do that. But you're doing so great at it. Think about using those strategies in your real life. Man, gaming is a whole different ball game after I listen to my son. So I hope that helped you. Now you have to help me. I need to make up my mind. So if you can let me know who's the best, I will be eternally grateful. Thank you. Bye-bye. Today's word of the day is Ambora, meaning me. Ambora, knees. Hey guys, it's Danielle here at AgriFoods again. Today we are going to learn how to start a whippersnipper. And we're going to also learn about what PPE we need to start use before we can start it. So your PPE is your personal protective equipment and that's the stuff that we use to keep ourselves safe. So first things first, we need earmuffs to protect our ears because hearing damage can be a really big problem. If you don't like the big earmuffs, you can use the smaller earplugs which just insert into your ears. We need to protect our eyes, so we'll use safety glasses and to protect our hands, leather rigger gloves. All right, so that's everything we need. Then we'd learn how to start the machine. So before we start it, we need to make sure that we have trim a line so that we can actually cut the grass. We need to check the fuel. And if it's a two stroke machine, we need to check if it has oil. So we'll do that now, have a quick look. We have enough fuel and that's good to go. This machine is four strike and doesn't have any oil to put in it right now. We're going to turn, make sure that the choke is on and we're going to prime it three times. So with the button that we will show you in a moment, we're going to press that down three times. And then when we're ready to start it, we're going to pull the cord at the end here. Hi guys, now that I have my PPE on, we are going to start the machine. So we've already primed it and we've checked that it has enough fuel. We've checked that we have trimmer lines, so we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna use the pull cord and give it a start. There you go, nice and easy. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to Urara. <laughs> <laughs> 